these data are indeed uh, very transformative. Um, we are talking about an agent called uh, DATO, which is an antibody drug conjugate. And the objective here is to replace chemotherapy and be, be, be very targeted on the tumor type. Uh, so in breast cancer, for instance, we had uh, tremendous results uh, beating uh, chemotherapy as well as in lung cancer. And uh, the uh, beauty of it is that not only we beat those uh, chemotherapy treatments uh, from an efficacy viewpoint, but we also have much better tolerability profiles. So I have now agents that uh, will actually uh, bring patients a solution that is effective, but also better tolerated and can be combined with our immuno-oncology products. Pascal, we saw the market reaction to the news flow this week and it wasn't great. It wasn't a strong bounce as you potentially would expect on the back of progress around major drugs like this. Are you disappointed with the market reaction? Well, what is important is really not the uh, daily fluctuations of our share price. We've had those ups and downs in the past, uh, Julian. I think what is important really is the overall direction of the company and in particular our pipeline of new products. And the data are, are strong. And I think over time, uh, the few concerns that have emerged uh, in, uh, in, in the minds of a few market, market participants, I think those concerns will disappear. Um, the physicians at the ASMO uh, were very supportive of, of this data, both in breast cancer, but also in lung cancer. Um, but in our industry, when you innovate, you always have questions. This is the nature of science. People debate, question data, especially when they are very new. Uh, we're opening a new field, and uh, I think it will take a little time for people to process the importance of the data we've presented and the application in uh, clinical practice. Uh, Pascal, just to follow up Karen's questioning as well, I mean, I, I guess the point for many of the investors is when does this turn from a stunningly exciting technology for society, for the treatment of cancer and other illnesses as well, when does it turn from that into a blockbuster and a very usable technology, sir? Well, the next step for us is to file. And uh, so we are in the process of preparing the submission to the, uh, the FDA in the United States and uh, the AMA in Europe and, of course, the MHR in the UK. Uh, and this will uh, take place very soon. Um, then, of course, it takes a few months for the regulators to uh, review these uh, applications. So we would hope to be launching in the United States towards the end of next year, early 2025. Uh, so it's still going to take a few months uh, for the regulators to review the, uh, the filings. But I think during this period of time, as we deliver additional clinical data, uh, the market will realize the uh, importance of, uh, of this agent. Pascal, um, I mean, I, I, as you know, I, I come at this from a market point of view rather than understanding the technology point of view, so you'll just have to bear with me. Antibody drug conjugates, just tell us how much further these kind of technologies can go, in your opinion. We're talking here, of course, about chemotherapy, uh, looking at breast cancer, looking at lung cancer as well, but do we have further extensions of the abilities of this type of technology to actually revolutionise healthcare? Yeah, I mean, if you think about the last uh, 30, year in 30 years in cancer, it's really, it's really being about uh, chemotherapy. And chemotherapy is the equivalent of carpet bombing, if I can allow myself to use this analogy. And you carpet bomb a tumor, but unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, collateral damage to healthy cells and therefore a lot of side effects. Uh, antibody drug conjugates are the equivalent of very precise bombing. So you attach a toxin to an antibody, and the antibody will actually dock to the uh, cancer cell. And as a result, the toxin will only kill uh, the, the cancer cell. So there's a little bit sometimes of uh, side effects, of course, but it's much more limited relative to chemotherapy. And then, and then you can imagine the application is the same as chemotherapy. So it will apply to all sorts of tumors, gastric cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer. Almost every single type of cancer who is treated by chemotherapy today can be treated by this targeted chemotherapy tomorrow. And then you will see the combination of some of those agents, uh, some of those antibody drug conjugates. And that's why we have a, a pipeline of those agents so we can combine them. Importantly, we will also see the combination of those agents with immunotherapy, and we also have immuno-oncology products in our pipeline. And when you combine the two, you can deliver a synergy and get more durable results. The objective, of course, is to increase the rate of response to the treatment, but also make sure that uh, 
we have durable response so we can potentially cure patients or move their cancer into a chronic state. 